Okay, this is 4.3 Algebra 2. Um, I'm actually going to call this Part 1, so we'll call this Part 1 there now. And Part 1 is, we're going to talk about factoring techniques. Um, so I'm going to take you through a couple different uh, variations of factoring to kind of bring us back into the fold before we actually do 4.3 together. Um, with what it wants us to do because it kind of assumes a lot of things. Um, number one, when we're talking about factoring, there are different, like four different levels that we should be talking about. Number one, you should always, always look for the GCF, which is the greatest common factor. What can I take that everybody has? So take that first. Then, we go to the fact that there are two terms. If there are two terms, my my mind, I am looking for, hey, there must be the difference of squares. Is it a square minus a square? Is it uh, the sum or the difference of cubes, which is a cube plus a cube, or a cube minus a cube? There are formulas for that that help us a lot and are allow us to factor things a lot faster. If there are three terms, that's what our lesson was technically supposed to be on. Then we have two different levels here. Where A is equal to 1 and when A is not equal to 1. So we're going to break that up, do that over two different times. And what you're going to find is if A is equal to 1, that's the easy ones. Those are the ones we like. Because I can go to find the factors of C. Remember the last uh, letter, or the last number, sorry, in standard form that add up to B. Add or subtract to B, it matters what B is positive or negative. And if you can do that, then that's going to be great. If A does not equal 1, like it says here, now we're going to multiply A times C, first term times last term, the uh, coefficients. And then we're going to find the multiple or the factors or the group of that that um, adds up to B. So we can split it up and factor by grouping. Again, I'm going to go over these a little bit more detail when we get to them. And if you have four terms, then you can do the factor by grouping. So I'm going to go a little bit out of order, and I will jump around a little bit to put something that's a little bit easier with a little bit more difficult together. Um, and then finally at the end, we are going to end with the uh, trinomials, three terms, that have a not equal to one. So, greatest common factor is the first thing up. We're looking for what does everybody have? So, if I'm looking at 3x squared plus 12x, I see an x squared here, I have an x there. You think about um, factoring in this way is that if I wanted to go and say, hey, everybody in class is to give me um, the, the most money that everybody has. So, if I were to sit a couple kids in a row and say that first kid says Billy or something, and I say, Xavier, or Billy, how much money you got? And he's like, I got a $20 bill. So I'm thinking, hey, there's maybe five kids, ten kids in a classroom. They all give me $20. I'm sitting pretty good. But then the next person, maybe it's Xavier, Xavier goes and says, well, I only got a $5 bill. Well, guess what? Okay, everybody can still give me five. That's fine. Uh, but that means Billy doesn't have to give up his 15. He only has to give me a 5 because everybody has to give the same. And then I say I get to the third student and she's like or he's like, I actually don't have anything. Well, now everybody's off the hook because not everybody can give me stuff. So that's what kind of like factoring is. you got to take what everybody can give. And if I look here, I've got two different categories, we'll say. The coefficients, the 3 and the 12, and then the x's, which is x squared and x. So it doesn't matter which one of those categories you look at first, but um, I tend to use the variables first because sometimes they stand out to me. Now remember when you say x squared, it really means that you have two of them. So I have an x times an x, and that's an x. They both have an x. So they can take an x out. Now when I factor, I'm taking out, but I'm also leaving something behind. So what I'm leaving behind goes inside the parentheses. Now I can look at the 3 and I can look at the 12. This is 3, this is 12. That means they both are divisible by 3. So I could take a 3. So now factoring, guys, is like really like dividing. 
So what I can assume here, or I'm thinking, is how do I take 3x and divide by or 3x squared and divide it by 3x? 3 divided by 3, it's 1. It's gone. x squared divided by x leaves me with an x. 12 divided by 3, or a positive 12 divided by 3 is positive 4. And x divided by x is gone, so I get x plus 4 inside. That is factoring. Guess what? This is a quadratic, actually. You just factored a quadratic. Congratulations. Now, not everything is obviously a quadratic, like our next example. That's a fifth power. So that's a quintet. There's a polynomial. But it could do the same thing. It looks like they do have some things in common. And so let's type let's start with the, the very uh, the coefficients now. This time. 27 and 9 or negative 9. It looks to me that 3 would go into both of those. But then I'm thinking I'm like, wait a minute, this is a 9. 9 times 3 is 27. So why can't I take a 9 instead? Now, we could take negative numbers, you could take positive numbers. Generally, when we have things out front, we have those to be positive. What's 27? Oh, wait, we're not done yet. I'm jumping ahead here. This guy has 5x's, this guy has 2x's. That means they both can give up 2 of them. Okay, 27 divided by 9 is 3 x to the fifth divided by x squared using your exponent rules you subtract and you get x to the third and nine negative nine divided by nine is negative one x squared divided by x squared is gone it's one so you get nine x squared times the quantity three x cubed minus one now when i get to the homework is I'm not going to necessarily give you anything on just the greatest common factor. But it's your number one rule, which means you do it every single time. So if this answer in here would have been divisible by a 2, I would have to take that 2 out as well. I can't leave it not completely factored. So be careful when you're doing your problems. If you can keep going, you keep going. And the last thing before our video, our video will end, and I'll give you your homework, is um, when A equals 1. These are quadratics. Now we're talking about possibly them being in standard form, some of them not being in standard form. So, a good rule of thumb, put into standard form. That's kind of the biggest thing you should do for quadratics. So these are quadratics. They're all going to be three terms. So if you go back to what I said before, now if you notice A is equal to 1, A is equal to 1. So now we just look at C. Find factors of C. So find factors of C that add to B. Handwriting is impeccable, I see. So, here's the cool thing. When you have A equal 1, you jump for joy, you do a fist pump, you can automatically go ahead and put these parentheses in. These parentheses are going to allow you to break it up. Now, we're all both of our problems here are in X's. They can be in any variable. You guys should know that. And the biggest thing is, how do I get to an x squared? Well, that's an x times an x. Because, guys, we're going to reverse engineer foiling. Now, we didn't jump into this, kind of into the middle of the book. So, remember, foil first, outside, inside, last. So, that's going to be very important when you go to check your work. Now, like I said, I can look at 5. Let's do factors of 5. 1 and 5. 1 and 5 are the only factors of 5, so I'm going to put a 1 here and a 5 here. It does not matter. Switch them around, good to go. The biggest thing, though, is that you need to now assign, uh, not variables, assign signs to the 1 and the 5 so that you add them up to get to a negative 4. So I think the only way it can be is if the middle number is negative, the bigger number has to be negative. So, x times x is x squared. 
x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 1 times x is plus x and minus 5. And if you add those two guys up, you will end up with negative 4. So we can do the same thing here with the x squared plus 3x plus 2. I already noticed that a is equal to 1. I'm happy. I can go x and x. Find the factors of 2. 1 and 2. Well, that's my only option. So I put 1 and 2. Hey, notice that this is a positive and a positive. Maybe I shouldn't underline them like that. But they're both positive. Therefore, I have to add them up. Because x times 2 is 2x plus another x equals 3x. So let me come up with an example here. Like this one of x squared plus 20x plus 36. Because I hopefully can see that a is still equal to 1. But I also should notice that 36 doesn't just have one pair like these other guys did. So 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Those are all factors of 36. But the question is, which one of those could add to 20? And you would have to choose the 2 and 18. So x, x, 2, 18. They're both positive, so therefore add them up. 2 plus 18 is definitely 20. You've now just factored a quadratic with a equal to 1. Here is your homework. Yes, there are 8 problems. I want you to do all 8. The first two are uh, greatest common factors. And the second two... Ooh, I think I might have messed up here. Give me a second. All right. I fixed it. I didn't like those first ones. And then these ones are A equal 1. So the first one, the first four, find his greatest common factor. Make sure that you are also, you're factoring by finding the greatest common factor. There should be a set of parentheses, of things that are left inside, things that are outside that you took. And then the last four are when A is equal to 1. Make sure that everything gets put in the standard form when you're done because I know the first four that I just created are not necessarily a perfect standard form. You may want to rearrange that. Have a great day.